Hi, I'm Steve Good, and welcome to the Scroll Saw Workshop. Uh, I'm going to do another video tonight on the basics of Corel Draw. And again, just to go back over what I'm trying to accomplish here, I create all my scroll saw patterns in Corel Draw, as many of you know. And several of you have let me know that you've gone out and purchased Corel Draw also and uh, are trying to get started. So what I'm going to do in this series of videos is just take you through the very basics. Now we've done a few videos already about the user interface and some of the basic drawing commands and selection commands. I'm going to continue that tonight and we're going to talk about the uh, line drawing tools. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. If you go up to the line drawing flyout menu, you'll see that we have several different tools in here. And I'm only going to talk about a few of them tonight, and uh, then we'll move on to uh, some of the more advanced ones a little later on. Uh, the first tool in the line drawing flyout is the freehand tool. Then we have the Bezier tool. And after that, we have the artistic media tool, the pen tool, which is the one that I use uh, most of the time. And then we also have the polyline tool. And uh, those are the ones I'm going to talk about tonight. We may not get to the Bezier tool. I'm going to save that for last. I've done a video on that before, and it's, it's probably the most complicated of the drawing line drawing tools, so we may not get to that. Let's start out with the freehand tool and just some of the basic uh, basics behind that. So I'm going to go ahead and select the freehand tool, and you'll notice that my cursor now has a little squiggly under it, and that just designates that we have the freehand tool selected. The freehand tool works in a couple different ways. If I go onto the screen and click and pull away, you'll notice that it's attached to a line. And when I click again, it's going to draw that line, and that's what you've got. Now, you'll also notice if I take my cursor and go to one of the end nodes of this line, that the little squiggly on my cursor will change to a return arrow. And that means that I will now be able to continue this line by clicking again. I can move away, click, and again, we've created the second line. Now if I go back to that node, the return arrow comes back. I can click, create my third line, move back, get my return arrow, click, move back, get my return arrow, and click. And now what we've done, because we got the return arrow on all these nodes, is we've created a closed shape that we can then color in. That's the first way of using the freehand tool. Uh, the other method of the freehand tool is to just simply click the left mouse button and hold it down and drag and the, the line will attempt to follow your cursor as you move around the screen. Now you'll also notice if I come back to the very beginning of that line that I get my return arrow back again. And if I let go with that return arrow then it creates a closed shape uh, which then we can also fill in. So that's how you use the freehand tool to create uh, lines like that, freehand lines like that, and then use the return arrow to know that you're back on the node to create a closed shape. That's all there is to the freehand tool. I very rarely ever use it in creating patterns, but uh, that's uh, how it works. The next tool I want to talk about is the uh, polyline tool, and that's the next tool that's the easiest to use. Now the difference between the polyline tool and the freehand tool is that the polyline tool does not end. If I click on the screen and pull away and click again, the freehand tool would then have stopped that line. But you'll notice that the polyline tool just continues to draw. No matter how many times I click, it leaves the, uh, the line on the screen. And again, when I come back to the beginning node, I'll get my return arrow and I click and that will create a fillable shape just like we did with the freehand tool, only we didn't have to uh, go back to the node each time. Uh, so that's uh, basically all there is to the polyline tool. Uh, when you click on the screen, if you click the escape bar, it'll let you start over, or the escape button, it lets you start over. So until you actually finish that line by double clicking, it will you know, continue to draw. If you hit the escape key, it'll stop. And if you double click, it'll also stop at that particular node. Now, at this point, if you wanted to go ahead and make this a fillable shape, you can still get your return arrow by going back to that end node, clicking, going back over, getting the return arrow again on the first node, clicking, and now you've got the uh, fillable shape again. So you're always able to come back and complete the pattern with any of these tools. Okay, 
that's the polyline tool another tool that I very seldom ever use but it can be used to trace uh, uh, pictures and stuff so you could you know you could use it for that okay the next one I want to talk about is the uh, creative media tool and what this tool does is allows you to select different brushes uh, that you can use on the screen and once you click this creative media tool it gives you these different options up here at the top of the screen and again it's another tool that I very seldom ever use for creating patterns so I'm going to go through it pretty quick here basically it allows you just to select a uh, particular brush draw that brush on the screen and it will give you an outlined shape uh, which you can determine the width of up here in your uh, uh, numeric input up here so now if I draw that same shape you can see it will be larger uh, again not a tool that I use a lot because I very seldom use any freehand tools in creating patterns because you generally have to be uh, more accurate than the freehand tools will allow you to be but they're there uh, they do have their uses so you want to know that you can use them okay the last tool I want to talk about in this video is the pen tool and it's the one I use all the time I use this tool to uh, do all my tracing uh, just because I find it to be the easiest again when you click on the screen it will begin a line and as you click just like the polyline tool it will go ahead and put the lines on the screen and when you come back to the beginning node you'll see that instead of the return arrow you get the uh, little circle down there below the pin and that means that you have then created a fillable shape now the reason I use this this uh, tool so much is it's the one I use to trace patterns and what you'll see me doing pretty often when I'm tracing patterns is after I get the uh, pattern traced with very rough outlines I'll come back to my uh, shape tool select that I will then go up here to the select all nodes button and then I'll move over to the convert uh, line to curve and then once I select that then I can take any of these lines that I've created and I can shape them using the, the shape tool uh, around the pattern that I'm uh, trying to reproduce. So you'll see me use this tool uh, by far the most often. Okay, that's the basic line drawing tools that I want to talk about tonight. Don't want these videos to get too long and too boring, so I'm going to stop right there. In the next video, we'll uh, spend a little time talking about the Bezier tool and uh, what uses it has. Uh, if I were going to practice any of these tools, the pen tool is the one I would practice with the most. It, it is the one I think you will use the most. Uh, this three-point curve tool probably won't go into that, but basically it just allows you to uh, click, drag, let go, and then the pointer hangs onto it so you can create a curve out of that line. So it's click, drag, let go, and then you'll see that with no mouse button pushed down, it, it turns into this curve. So I'll throw that one in there real quick because it's so simple. Uh, again, I don't use that very much, and you can see I can get the return arrow there. Click, drag, get the return arrow on the other node, drag, and then I have a fillable shape. So that's the three-point tool, and we'll throw that one in there real quick. Okay, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one where we talk about Bezier curves.